I'm Dr. Greg Ellis, and I want to talk to you about the most important nutritional discovery of the last century, and that is the process of glycation. I've written a book about it, my new book, The Glycation Factor. Glycation was first discovered in the early 1900s, but the glycation theory of disease and aging came out in 1987. It was presented by Dr. Anthony Cerami of the Rockefeller Institute in New York. Let me read you what Cerami said. What is glycation? As people age, their cells and tissues change in ways that lead to the body's decline and death. The cells become less efficient and less able to replace damaged materials. At the same time, tissues stiffen. For example, the lungs and the heart muscle expand less successfully, the blood vessels become increasingly rigid, and the ligaments and tendons tighten. Older people are also more likely to develop cataracts, atherosclerosis, and cancer, among other disorders. Few investigators would attribute such diverse effects to a single cause. A single cause leads to all those things. What is the single cause involved? It is glucose, blood sugar. Imagine that. And we all thought it was fat and cholesterol for the last 50 years. It wasn't. It was always glucose. So what happens in the process of glycation? The glucose, the blood sugar, binds to all the proteins that make up the different parts of your body. This includes, as he pointed out, the lungs of all your organs, your genetic material, your DNA and RNA. Imagine that and everything just gets bound together and cross links form between all these different proteins making everything stiff and tight. So the cause of all these advanced degenerative diseases we're now experiencing is coming from glucose. Glucose comes from carbohydrates. Now that is incredible. All the health recommendations that we receive every day is to eat more carbohydrate containing foods. Why did we get in that position? It happened because they blamed fat and cholesterol on the cause of heart disease and other di disease diseases as well. And then we had the ever-burgeoning obesity epidemic that began. So the logic that followed to help people reduce their calorie intake was to cut back on fat because fat has nine calories per gram. Carbohydrates have only four. So they reasoned, well, we'll have people replace their fat with carbohydrates. And we did. During the last 50 years, there was a major shift away from eating fat, particularly saturated fat, and increase in our consumption of carbohydrates. The outcome of that was an ever-increasing obesity epidemic. They never figured it out. They still haven't figured it out that the carbohydrates were actually implicated in this. But that's weight control. I'm talking about health and disease now. We're going way beyond the weight control issue. We'll cover that in plenty of detail, but we have to now change our thinking. This is the most incredible nutri nutritional discovery of the last century. We need a revolution in our thinking if we're going to prevent these diseases of aging and if we're going to also reduce the loss of quality in life that we're experiencing because we're all glycating. Young kids are glycating. Everybody's glycating. So the glucose binds to the proteins that make you up. That's a glycated protein. That glycated protein binds to the other gly glycated protein next to it, and that's how it goes. It's a big chain reaction, all coming from glucose. So as you eat more fruit, grains, vegetables that contain high levels of carbohydrates, you are sort of committing what I call glucoside. Very, very, very dangerous, and our medical community knows nothing about this. Currently, there's 7,000 scientific articles published in the literature, scientific literature, and nobody's talking about it. And also, this is 1987 is when this thing came out, 1987. So we've had all those years to get a handle on this, and people don't even know about it. I'm the first person to ever write a book about it. So it's really unimaginable what this process of glycation is doing to us and how we are subjecting our bodies to this onslaught of glucose. Now, it gets even worse than that. It gets far worse than that. Most people burn glucose as their primary source of fuel. 
glucose is not the body's choice, the first choice. The first choice is to burn fat. But nobody knows that. And all of our athletes in particular, they rely on high carbohydrate intakes because they all believe that they have to burn glucose as the primary source of fuel. And that's just simply not true. So now, as, as the body processes the glucose that is released from the carbohydrates, gets into the blood, gets into the cells, it's got to break that glucose down to get the final energy product at the end. And that's an 11-step process of enzymes making smaller molecules. About midway through this cycle, something forms called methylglyoxal. That's called a dicarbonyl, and there's other dicarbonyls too. Methylglyoxal is 20,000 times more powerful as a glycating agent than is glucose. So this methylglyoxal is just really, really bad news. And as a result of processing the carbohydrates, the glucose, you're forming these compounds cause atherosclerosis. So it never was cholesterol that was causing the atherosclerosis. It was the glycated protein. And the glycated protein was damaging the blood vessel wall. Well, how did the cholesterol get involved? Hans Kornitz showed us back in uh, 1989 that cholesterol is involved in a repair process in the blood vessel wall. So the cholesterol is actually coming in to repair the damage created by the glycate, glycated protein. He didn't know about glycated proteins at the time. Obviously, that theory just came out a couple years before, and it had not yet gotten a lot of traction. And, of course, people weren't picking it up. They haven't picked it up today, so they didn't pick it up then. So that's what the cholesterol was doing. It was binding to the tissue pro the, t the vessel, blood vessel walls and repairing the damage created by the glycated protein. Now, what else do these glycated proteins do? Or what other things get glycated? One of the most important parts of your cell is a thing called the mitochondria. The mitochondria produces energy. It's the source of your energy production. And mitochondrial tur turnover, they turn over th every 30 seconds to every couple minutes. The body breaks them down and makes new ones. Well, the mitochondria gets damaged by the glycation process. And the proteins that make it up cross-link with one another. And it makes it very, very difficult for the parts of the body or the enzymes of the body that break down the mitochondria because they can't overcome the binding. So this leads to the death of the mitochondria. And mitochondria, dying mitochondria, mitochondria that are sick are directly related to the aging process. It's a, it's a reflection of how rapidly you're aging. So this is a major, major problem. And we really need to avoid the glycation process. And that means we need to watch the carbohydrates we eat. This doesn't have to be a no carbohydrate diet, but you have to restrict the carbohydrates. And I spell all that out exactly how to do it in the book. It's, it's not a severe form of an Atkins-type diet because Atkins was just too severe. He just really didn't understand the process that well of how to set up the low-carbohydrate diet correctly. But you need to start paying attention to this because your health and your life depend on it. That's how important this is. So the take-home message is that it was never, ever glucose, I mean, I'm sorry, cholesterol and fat. It was always glucose. The things were to, the exact substance we're told to consume now. So you really want to look at this and understand this process. I'm Dr. Greg Ellis. We'll hook up again.